Father, we just come before you today. You are the true and living God. The God that still speaks. The God that still moves. The God that still sees us where we're at and meets us there. Father, we thank you that you are that God. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the word that you've given me. Father, I thank you that you would use my mouth as a vessel for the message that you want to get across. And Father, we thank you for that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to let you be seated. Well, I want to take the first couple minutes here just to, to welcome our online family to the service. I want to encourage you that uh, the Spirit of God knows no place, no time. So don't, don't enter into these online services, even though we're forced to some, some of us to be in these online services instead of here in person. Don't come into them acting like it's a show. But come in ready to worship God. I've heard several people tell me that the Spirit of God, the presence of God has shown up right in their dining room, right in their living room when they're partaking in these services. So I just encourage you, we want to welcome you, but I encourage you to take part in the service, to be a part of the service, no matter where you're at, even though you're not here, you can still be part of the service. So what I want to talk about this morning is um, it's, it's, been, it's been in my heart for the last two weeks. And that is that we are not alone. You know, the, the enemy takes and he isolates people. He gets them off by themselves. He gets them off in a, in a place where they, they feel like they don't have anybody else. They don't have anything else. Sometimes they get all the way down to where they feel like they don't have anything to live for. But we are not alone. See, especially if you're a believer. If you're a believer, you've been granted into the family of God. You have a father that cares so much. You know, John 3.16 says that for he so loved the world. You are in that scripture, the world. He so greatly loved every single one of us. That he sent his only son to die on the cross for us. To shed his blood. To take the beating on that cross and before that cross so that we could come back into covenant with him. So that we could come back into relationship with him. So we are never alone. See, we, we've, uh, in society today, as, as we are right now and with the virus going around, we've been forced in some occasions, people that they're, they're not working, so they're at home, shut up in their house. There are, some people are afraid to go to the grocery store, afraid to go to here, afraid to go to there. And so they are very isolated. And I feel like the enemy is taking the opportunity to build on that isolation that we've had to do for our health purposes, to build on that isolation and tell people that they're all alone and they have nobody and there's no reason for them to live and they might as well just... And we want to come today and guarantee the fact that we serve a God that cares. We serve a God that doesn't leave us alone. Turn with me to Genesis 1 and verse 26. Genesis 1 and verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creep up, creep, uh, creepeth upon the earth. In Genesis 2.18, it says that, uh, And the Lord God said, It is not good for that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. So, in that first passage of Scripture, we see that God made us in his image. And the reason he did that is that if you read the word, the word says that he walked in the garden in the cool of the day. And that Adam had relationship where he could walk with him and he could talk with him. And they had a relationship much like uh, what a very close friend would have on the earth today. And that relationship was broken by sin. But when Jesus came and died on the cross, he brought us back in a relationship. He brought us back into that fellowship. 
that we can have with him. The devil constantly pushes us into isolation. If he wants to get over on you, he's first going to push you away from every positive influence in your life. That means that many times he pushes you away from church, away from God. He gets you aggravated and upset with this person or that person or this church or that church. And, and he sometimes gets you upset with God himself because he'll tell you, you know, God wasn't there for you in this and God wasn't there for you in this. And the truth of the matter was that God never moves. He is always there. The body of Christ, although we're human and sometimes we make mistakes, the body of Christ is there. But what he needs to do to get you in defeat is to isolate you from those positive influences and then he can talk whatever garbage he wants to talk to you. And many times, unfortunately, we listen. Turn with me to uh, John 15, verse 5 and 6. As you're turning, hold on just recant the story here and I remember when I was younger I remember my sister had a real problem with getting ready so we could leave the house and um, it wasn't a one-time thing it wasn't a two-time thing it was many 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 times that my dad or my mom would say hey you know I need you to get your shoes on get your coat on we're getting ready to go well many times we would be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and I know there's nobody else that's listening to this uh, this morning that has ever had to wait on people. But we were having to wait on her. And so my dad one day was so frustrated and so done with waiting on my sister that he loaded everybody else up in the car, shut the door and locked it, and drove away. She freaked out. She Saw him drive away. Well, all we did was drive around the block and come back. You know that when we came back, she had her shoes on. But she completely freaked out thinking that he had left her alone all by herself. Well, the truth of the matter, he was just around the corner. But he was trying to teach her a lesson. I just want to tell you this morning. That no matter what the enemy says, you are not alone. You have not been left alone. God doesn't do that to us to teach us a lesson. God does the opposite. He is always there for us. He is always operating in love. He is always trying to get something to us, not get something from us. See, God is, God's called, all throughout the word, it's called God the Father. And although in this society we live in today, the 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 father figure, isn't always a positive picture. We should always look at what the father figure should be because that's what God is to us, the one that's always there for us, the one that never leaves us and never forsakes us, the one that's always there when we need something. See, listen, I don't care how good a friend you have. You know, and, and, you know I've been married over 20 years and my wife, I say she's my best friend, and she is. But there's going to be a time when my wife is going to be gone, and I'm going to need something. There's going to be a time when maybe my wife doesn't agree with me on whatever I'm doing, and I'm going to need to reach out to somebody. But see, people fail. People are not always there. They're not, even though they say they will always be there, there's going to be a time when the schedules just don't line up. But see, God is always there. He will always change his schedule so that he's with us every single time. When we call out in the middle of the night and we need something from him, he is available. You know, sometimes at work when I'm, I need something, I have to call my boss and, and I have to say, hey, do you, do you have a second? Because I know he's super busy. So sometimes I got to make sure that he's got time at that moment that I called to go over some things with me so I can get an answer. Well, God never has to be asked, do you have a second? Do you have time? Do you have time for me right now? Because he always has time for us. John 15, verse 5. I'm reading it in the King James Version, and then I'm going to read it in the, Amplif or in the uh, Message Bible. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. 
for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them in the fire, and they are burned. Jesus provided us the way back to the Father, where we can be a part of him, a branch of him. Not just something that grows on it, but a, a completely ingrained branch that comes off of him to be one in the body. In the message version, it says it like this. It's just, I love the way it says it. I am the vine and you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. And if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is when you produce grapes, when you, when you mature as my disciples. That's an awesome, awesome picture of the father. That if we're constantly ingrained in him and his words are in us, that's the relationship with the father. That's how we have that relationship. You know, you can't really have a relationship with a, with a person on this planet and there's another human being if you don't have conversations and you don't spend time and you don't take time to spend time with them and they take time to spend time with you. And so as we separate ourselves from the way that uh, the world does things and isolates themselves and we start to Go back to where we should be. You know, this, this isolation and the way this, uh, this process has happened, it's scared a lot of people. It's, it's, it's put a lot of fear out there. And, and obviously, if you just, all you got to do is watch the news. You just watch the news for three seconds, and it's all you hear is fear, 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 fear. Hey, you better be scared. And if it's not the virus, it's, I don't know, murder hornets, and it's all these things. Here's the next thing you should be scared of before the first one's ever even done with. And what I'm coming to you with today is I'm saying we serve a God that's always there. Now, we're going to have to walk through things on this planet. We're going to have to walk through, you know, the word says that, you know, as long as you're on this earth, you're going to have to go through things. But the promise is this, that we have a hope so great in him that we're not walking through him by ourselves. That's the promise. See, we don't come to God and get into relationship with God, hopefully, for what we can get out of him. See, have you ever had a relationship with somebody on this earth where it was always about what you could give them and what you could do for them and, and, you know, every time they call, they're calling to ask you to do something? Who likes those relationships? You know, sometimes you see those people calling you, oh, gosh, oh, what do they want now? But see, God is there for us every moment. And if we came into relationship thinking that, you know, we're going to get salvation, it's just all about what God could give us and what he could do for us and, and all those things, then we're looking at things the wrong way because it's a relationship. It's him in us and us in him. You know, the word says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, there's a relationship there. See, if you do that and you, it's a tune-up process, you have to continually maintain that. But if you do that, here's the payoff. When you do have to walk through something, you're not walking through it alone. You always have him with you. And he's always going to show you the way and teach you what you need to do to come on the other side of it. In Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6, I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble in dread before them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. And he will not fail you or abandon you. See, the enemy is going around today telling people a lie. He's telling them, hey, God's abandoned you. 
God doesn't care about you. This, this Christian, this believer, they don't care about you. But see, the word of God says that he will never leave you and never forsake you. And that's the God that we serve. That's what we need to remember when we're in those times where we feel alone. We need to immediately recognize who that lie comes from so that we can treat it appropriately. You know, in Hebrews it says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. The word of God says that he is not a man that he should lie. What that really means when you study it is he doesn't have the ability to lie. It's not that he won't lie. See, I, I'm, I'm very much about my integrity, and uh, I don't lie. But, you know, there might be some time that I might not have all the information, and, and I might not say the right thing, or I might just plain out lie. I do everything I can not to do that. I have the ability to lie. I just choose not to. See, God is not a man that he even has the ability to say something that's not the truth. And that's the God we serve. Matthew 27, verse 46. Matthew, even online, there you go. Matthew 27, 46. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, and I'm not even going to try to say it, but that is to say, my God, my God, why, why how hast thou forsaken me? The reason that he had felt like he was forsaken was because at that moment he took on the sins that we would do. And he took on that sin. And because of that and that only, God had to turn his back. That's what the word says. God had to turn his back on him because of the sinful nature that he had at that moment when he took on the sins for us. So that's the only time that God's ever forsaken anybody is when sin nature came in and it, it got us separated from him. But Jesus, Jesus died on that cross. He did that so that you and I could come back into agreement with him come back into covenant with him the last uh the last little bit of scripture that i want to talk about uh today is this and uh we'll just we'll just kind of skip through but i want to recount this story to you and that is that uh in, in the book of daniel there was these three hebrews and it's shadrach meshach and abednego and everybody knows the story but shadrach meshach and abednego lived in the, in the king's uh, kingdom, and they had served the king. But see, at some point in time, the king got tricked. He got tricked into thinking that, we, that he should create this image of himself and that everyone in the kingdom should bow down and worship that image when the trump blew. So they put out the decree, and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego right off the, right off the get said, uh, yeah, I'm real sorry, but uh, it's not going to happen. See, our God says, you shall put no other God before me. And so we're not going to worship. And then the king said, well, you're, you better, or there's going to be a punishment. See, it wasn't that they weren't going to have to walk through it, but what they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt is it didn't matter because their God would see them through whatever they needed to see through to get to the other side and be victorious. So they said, King, we're not going to do that. We're not going to worship a false image. So the time came and uh, the, the trumpet blew and the whole kingdom fell down and worshipped this image except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three really uh, teenagers, young, young men, very young, these three young men refused to do that because it put them at odds with their father God and what he had said to do. Well, at this time, because of the law that had taken place, the king had to follow through with what his decree was and what he had been tricked into. So 
it was the fiery furnace. So he said, turn the fiery furnace up seven times hotter than normal. So they did it. You know what? That thing was so hot that the people that were operating by it died from the heat that was coming out of it. So then the time came where they took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they threw them in this fiery furnace to punish them for not bowing to an image that was different than their father. And they threw them into this fiery furnace, and again, it was seven times hotter than it normally was. And as soon as they threw him into that furnace, the king looked inside that furnace. And he, you know what he said? He said, inside that furnace, wait a second, how many people do we put in there? The guard said, well, we put we threw three people in there. It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego we put in there. And the, the king said, behold, I see four people in the fire. That's because God did not leave them by themselves, no matter what they had to walk through. The hottest of the hot, seven times hotter than ever before, and God was with them in that fire, and he walked them through that. So we all know the end of the story, and the end of the story is that when they came back out of the fire, the three came back out of the fire, and when they saw them, they had not even a hair singed. Not even a hair singed. They didn't even smell. You ever sat around a bonfire and not smelled like fire afterwards? They didn't even have the smell of smoke on them because the Father God had protected them, had walked them through that trial to victory on the other side. See, that's how much our God cares for us. That he will walk through whatever we have to go through, but he's right there with us. We are not alone. So, also, in John, it talks about that Jesus left this earth in his, in his uh, physical body. And he said this, he, in 14, 16, John 14, 16, I will pray that the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. See, he also sent the Holy Spirit for us. That we would always, always, always have that comforter that peacemaker on the inside of us. Say, I just want to say to you today, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, I want you to know that you're not alone. That Father God cares so much for you that he will walk with you through anything. He's with you through thick and thin. He is closer than a brother, and he will walk through things that humans would never walk through with you. He'll walk through them with you. And then I also want to say this, that as believers in the body of Christ, not only is he here for you, but we're here for you. And when you need something, we're here. You know, that was uh, part of getting this app together and getting the website together and, and really pushing to do that is the fact that we can be in constant communication with the body. When you need something, you can constantly, you can get on there, you can send us a message. And we see it. And we can agree with you in prayer if that's what you need. If you need a visit, visitation by the pastor, we can get that arranged. We are here for you. And to the online family, I know that you're not sitting here with us today, but I want to tell you that he is always with you. You're never alone. And we're here for you at all times. We are here to support you and to be the body of Christ the way it should be. That's what we're here for. So, remember as you go out of here today that God, is, God never forsakes us. And we're never alone no matter what the situation is. Don't let the enemy lie to you and you believe it. That you're isolated and that he doesn't care because he does. Let's just pray over the service today. Father, we just thank you. Father, we thank you that you cared so much about us that you sent your only son to die on the cross to shed his blood to take a beating on his body to provide salvation for us to get us out of our own muck and our sins and to provide us a way back into covenant with you into relationship with you that you're always with us 
Father, I thank you for that. Father, if there's anybody out there today that needs a touch from you, Father, we stretch forth our hands. Father, as a symbol that we're stretching forth our prayers for them. Father, touch those bodies. Put healing out there, Father. Touch the hearts. Bring joy back into people's lives. Take away sadness. Take away depression. Father, come back in with those loving arms and just wrap your arms around those people. And Father, we thank you today. We thank you that you cared so much. In Jesus' name, amen.